Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Liberty Acres Homestead. I'm actually house sitting right now, so we're not at our main homestead today. And we've got an excited baby in the other room. Um, so Emery and I are house sitting, but I did bring along my sourdough starter so that I can make some bread while I'm here because I do love my sourdough bread. So I wanted to take you guys along on the process from start to finish on how to get a nice like artisan sourdough loaf yourself at home. Um, it's not very complicated. It's just a time consuming process. So you do have to prep. Um, I'm going to actually start this today, but I'm not going to be baking it until tomorrow morning. So there you have it. It takes about 24 hours to do this. So you just have to plan and prep. Um, and what we do to start out is I actually need to feed my sourdough starter and then later today when it's nice and active and at its peak, I will um, go ahead and start my dough. Then we have some rest periods um, before we bake tomorrow morning. So I wanted to take you guys through the process. Hope you guys enjoy and happy baking. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to take my starter, which I fed yesterday, and it rose almost to the top of the pint jar here, and then it deflated. So, this is not like an active, like, at its peak starter that I would want to use to bake with. So, what I'm going to do is discard some of this. Um, it actually will be a nice treat for um, Kelly and Eric's chickens. So, I'm going to save my discard and actually take it out there to let the chickens... Um, have at it. Um, otherwise, I probably would just throw it in the trash because since I'm at a friend's house, I wouldn't really want to save it to bake with later on just because I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of baking and hanging out here for too long. So let's go ahead and discard some of this. Um, I usually, for my recipe that I use, I'm going to discard to about two ounces on my glass. Then when I feed it, we'll be at about four ounces because when I feed it, I just essentially do like a one to one to one with the sourdough starter, the flour and the water. So I'll have about four ounces and then it should double, more than double, usually it goes up to like 10 or 12 ounces. And so when it's at its peak, before it starts to deflate, that's when we'll use it to bake with. So I'm gonna go ahead and discard some now. little bit more than four ounces but that'll do okay and then I'm just gonna add enough water to get the thick pancake batter consistency that I like to have in my starter And if you saw my sourdough starter from scratch video, you know that I use distilled water for my starter. My starter seems to really like distilled water. So I just get a gallon of that from the store and that usually lasts me a while. So I have tried many times using my well water. And my starters just don't really like it that much. So distilled water it is. Still a little bit too thick. Oh, splashed a little bit of water into my coffee. Hmm. I don't want to water that thing now. All right, that's kind of the consistency that I want. So you want to make sure that you have it very well mixed together. You want to scrape the bottom, get it all up because we want air to be incorporated in the whole starter. So I like to give it a few good stirs and make sure that it's just mixed very well. Okay, now I'm gonna scrape down the sides. 
that way I can double check where we're at on my marks on the jar and know when we'll be doubled. So, yep, we're right at about four ounces there. So, in this house, the bedroom is actually a little bit warmer, like kind of what I would call like room temp, so around 70-ish. The rest of the house is a bit cooler. Right now it's 64.8 in here. So I'm just gonna do my light lid on the top. It's not airtight. We wanna be sure that there's air able to get to your sourdough starter. And I'm gonna go sit it on the uh, dresser in the bedroom and just let it do its thing. And I will check back in with you guys whenever we have a nice active sourdough starter at its peak and ready to make a dough with. It's doing a little bit of snowing outside today, but I'm gonna go ahead and take the sourdough starter out to the birds and let them have at it. <laughs> little icy. Baby steps. Mando's not happy about me being out here. Mando, stop. Stop. Go on somewhere, Mando. <laughs> go on somewhere. Actually, here you can go. All right, we are back. So it is about four and a half, five hours after I fed my sourdough starter. Um, so it has essentially tripled. It probably would rise a little bit more before it peaks and then starts to deflate. You kind of want to get it in that really active like peak zone, but because of time management, I don't wanna be waking up in the middle of the night to do stuff with this bread dough. So I'm gonna go ahead and basically call it and go ahead and start my uh, dough. So my sourdough starter should be ready to go. It's pulling away from the sides pretty easy, you know, pretty normally for what a sourdough starter should do when you tip it on its side. See how it just slowly pulls away from the sides of the glass? That means we're probably in the safe zone. Um, so what I'm gonna do is put my bowl on the digital kitchen scale here. I'm gonna measure out 350 grams of water, 100 grams of sourdough starter, which typically if I just dump this upside down and into the bowl, it's about 100 grams and then I still have some left over in my jar to keep going with. Um, and then 500 grams of flour. I'm using unbleached all-purpose flour by King Arthur. It's my favorite flour to use. So I am going to bring you over here so you can see my scale, see what I'm doing over here, and we're gonna get this bread dough started.
As you can see, we've got this like really shaggy, sticky dough here. Um, I just made sure that it was all pretty well incorporated and mixed together, and I'm actually just gonna put some plastic wrap over the top to trap the moisture in there, and I'm gonna let it sit for 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna come back and add a little bit of salt. Um, for the majority of your sourdough recipes, you're gonna see that salt doesn't get added in the initial mix, because salt can slow down yeast production um, and we want to be sure that our yeast has time to really get in there and do its magic. And then something else that I wanted to show you guys was that even though I basically dumped this, just tilted it upside down and dumped the contents into the bowl here, I still have some in the bottom here. Plus when I scrape down the sides, I'm actually gonna have more uh, sourdough starter in there than what it looks like right now. So got plenty to bake with and plenty to keep on my counter, keep feeding and keep going with. Okay, it's been 30 minutes, so I grabbed a little tiny bowl. We're gonna measure out 12 grams of salt. I'm gonna add a little bit of water just to swirl it around and kind of mix it together. I'm gonna add it to my dough, really work it into the dough, and then once it's all worked in and mixed together really well, I'm gonna let it sit for another 30 minutes. Okay, so it's been 30 minutes. Now we're gonna do um, four series of stretch and folds, 30 minutes apart. So I hope that that makes sense. We're gonna do one right now, and then every 30 minutes we're gonna come back and do another series of stretch and folds until we get four total. So let me show you how I do that. Okay, with slightly wet hands, we are going to do, I'm gonna gather up 
the dough right here and we are going to stretch it, stretch it up high and fold it over. Give the bowl a quarter turn. Gather up your dough here. Stretch, fold. Fold, last one. Stretch and fold. So what this is going to do is actually start building some tension in our dough, which is a good thing. So we'll come back in 30 minutes and do this again. Time for another stretch and fold. I've got a little baby here who did not wake up from a happy nap. It was a sad nap. It was a sad nap. She just wants to show you guys her hair that needs to be brushed. You did not have a happy nap? Hair everywhere. Let me go put her down and then I'll be able to come do my stretch and fold. All right, we're about to do our last stretch and fold. Then we're gonna let it rest. We're letting the dough rest. Ideally, six to eight hours. But if I did that, that would put me at like 12.30 to 2.30 in the morning. Like I said, I'm not setting an alarm to wake up in the middle of the night to do anything with this dough. So I'll just wait as long as I can and do the next step before I go to bed and just try to give it as long as possible. Um, I'm also going to take it from the kitchen, which is a little bit cooler, to the bedroom, which actually is a little bit warmer. And so um, that should help it kind of speed along the process as well. Um, so yeah, gonna do a stretch and fold and then we're gonna let it sit for as long as possible. I'm still gonna timestamp when I do the next step just so that you guys have an idea that we don't have to be perfect in this recipe. We don't have to stick to the time schedule 100%. It allows us to be a little bit flexible with it and use our time management skills as best as possible. So here we go. Okay, so like I said, I've got a little space heater running in the bedroom here, so it is a little bit warmer. So I've got 
the dough here just gonna let it do its bulk rise okay I am gearing up to get ready for bed um, it's been about five hours for my bulk rise so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the dough out stretch it fold it again kind of roll it up and then I'm about I'm about to roll it and put more tension back into the uh, dough again because it's kind of puffed up a little bit of it's lost some of its shape so I'm basically going to be doing like a pre-shaping then I let it bench rest which means I just let it sit on the counter or the table for about 20 minutes then I do the final shape then I'll put it into my makeshift banton basket because I left my banton basket at home and of course I'm at a friend's house house sitting right now so I'm going to make a makeshift banton basket so it can just stay nice and cozy in the refrigerator overnight and then we will bake it tomorrow so here we go with the initial pre-shaping right, so we just want to make sure that we have a nice clean work area it is not going to be a flowered surface it's important not to have a flowered surface here so it will be sticky at first but that's why i have this basically little scraper to scrape up the sticky parts but you don't want it to have flour because you do want to build tension so um, it's a little bit easier to just show you rather than keep talking about it so So the dough is still a little bit sticky, but definitely not as sticky as before. And the longer you do let it proof, like if I had let it um, proof in there for about eight hours, it would be even less sticky than this. Okay, so what we wanna do is we want to really stretch it out. We're trying to make kind of a rectangled shape here. And we're getting all of that air out. We have a few little air pockets. I don't know if you can see that there, but we're trying to get all of the air out. Okay, now I'm basically gonna do a tri-fold. So I'm gonna fold in here and fold in here, and then we're gonna roll it up. Okay, now the fun part. So what you wanna do is you want to push the dough away from you, turn it about a quarter of a degree, and then pull it, or pull it to you. So push it away, turn it, pull it towards you. Push, turn, pull, push, turn, pull. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, some snow fell and scared the dogs. Push, turn, pull. Push, turn, pull. Push, turn, pull. Okay, so as you can see, that's turned it into a nice tight little ball. So I'm gonna let it sit here and rest for about 20 minutes while I make coffee, go brush my teeth, kind of get the last few things ready for bed. And then we're gonna put it in the Banton basket and put it in the fridge overnight. Okay, so my makeshift Banton basket is just uh, like a medium sized glass bowl with a dishcloth in here that I'm going to lightly flour. Just want to be sure that you get flour on the entirety of it. Okay, we're going to do one last shaping. So again, I'm just, might have to get the scraper out for this. Just getting it loosened up. Okay, so we are going to push 
turn, pull, push, turn, pull, push, turn, pull, push, and that is a pretty tight little ball there, so. Okay, and then we are going to turn it upside down, put it in our Banton basket so that the seam side is up. And I'm just kind of pinching that seam together just to make it stay tight. And then I'm just gonna throw the rag over it, throw the dish towel over it, and I'm gonna put it straight into the fridge just like this. And we'll see you back in the morning for some baking. Good morning, everybody. So we are about to get ready to bake some sourdough bread. I'm leaving my dough in the refrigerator until we're actually ready to bake it. So I'm gonna be preheating my Dutch oven at 500 degrees. Wow. And then once my Dutch oven is ready to rock and roll, then I'll get the dough out of the refrigerator, score it, do all the fun things, and then bake it. So here we go. Okay, the oven's preheated, so I'm gonna get the dough out of the fridge, and then I'm gonna show you guys how I dump it. Spread a little bit of flour on top, score it, and get it ready to put into the Dutch oven. And I don't have my lame with me here, just like I didn't have my Banton basket, but I'm just grabbing a sharp little knife to do kind of a deep cut over here. And then And that's all I'm gonna do for that. Okay, now I'm gonna turn the upper oven down to 450. And we're gonna let that bake with the lid on for 30 minutes, and then we'll take the lid off and do another 10 minutes without the lid on. One of the hardest things to do 
is to wait an hour and let this cool so that the crumb can settle, so that it can finish baking. Um, it doesn't just flop down and it just stays nice and chewy on the inside and crispy on the outside. So we do need to wait an hour, leave it on the cooling rack and let it cool before we cut into it. Now to reward myself for this labor of love, we're gonna cut into it, put some butter on it and enjoy. Beautiful crumb, nice air pockets. Oh, I'm so excited. Good enough. Sourdough bread is definitely a labor of love, but it's so worth it. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Mm. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to ask me any questions about your sourdough in the comments below. I am by no means an expert on sourdough. However, I've done it a lot. I really enjoy it and I would love to help you guys bake some sourdough artisan loaves at home yourself. So. Like I said, any questions, any comments, leave them below. I'll get back to them ASAP. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, be sure to do that as well. Happy baking.